Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope. For the week of September 29, 2024, I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a remarkable astrological week, without a doubt. Big moves happening in the sky now. Boy, is it a very special time. And it truly is so special now. The big news this week, that's getting all the glitz, glamour, and glory, is the fact that we have a solar eclipse happening on Wednesday in the sign of Libra. The next time we see an eclipse in this sign will be about nine years down the road. And that makes this energy that much more special. Libra suggests one-on-one -on -one alliances come into focus now, and in an instant, we're likely to see key partnerships in our lives differently in some way. And we'll see this play out on our individual journeys, but collectively as well, where we're understanding how it is that we are perceiving how we are perceived and how that informs an understanding of whom it is that we truly desire to be. There's a moment of truth here that spurs us into action, but it is likely to be a moment that feels uncomfortable, if not frustrating. And the main reason for that is that this eclipse is square Mars. As much as solar eclipses bring with them a brand new beginning, it is also a moment that will bring with it an awareness of all the history that we bring to this moment that has lent itself to the alliances that we've had past and present and how we truly feel about it at this moment in our lives. And whether it is that we are reflecting on the past, revisiting the past, looking at our earliest childhood messages, or whether it is that we're looking at where we are right now, and especially the homes that we have created, the energetic spaces in which we've gotten used to as of late, what was now needs to be released with love and what is right now needs to in some way alter and be different. The frustration of that, but also the willingness to do the work of that is likely to come right at the surface at this time. I think of eclipses as perhaps the most powerful symbol for brand new beginnings. Eclipses incorporate within them the nodes of the moon, and the nodes of the moon are powerful symbols of the soul's direction and the soul's desires in this lifetime. When we have a big celestial event like an eclipse, well, it's about us collectively having an understanding of what we're moving away from and what we're moving towards. Given that this solar eclipse is so close in the sky with the south node, that is a point of closure, of ending. As I speak of in my book, uh, The Universe is Wise and Loving, that explores the nodes of the moon in greater detail. And in that book, I illustrate how the ancients conceptualized the nodes of the moon as representing parts of a dragon. The head of the dragon is the north node. The tail of the dragon is the south node. I'm going to invite you to contemplate these symbols for a moment. The head represents a more elevated sense of understanding. It represents intellect. It represents not necessarily being motivated by our more base instincts, but rather understanding that we can elevate and move onward and move upward. The head has represented the higher chakras, and it is from the higher chakras that we ultimately connect with divine energies and we bring them into our bodies that much more. The dragon, of course, is a powerful symbol. It is a feathered serpent, really. Now, this conceptualization and understanding of the dragon is a conversation I've had many times with my dear friend, Yuridia Robles. I know you've seen her on my channel many times as well. And we co-wrote another book called Mayan Astrology, uh, her wisdom in that book. Consider what the feathered serpent is, right? It is the serpent, the wisdom of earth, of body, of the divine feminine. And when we look at feathers, well, they belong to birds, and birds are what reach high, right? They reach the heavens. They have long been considered this aspirational symbol for this idea of elevation and rising above whatever it is our current circumstances might be knowing that we can improve and knowing that there's also a higher vantage point. 
that is a part of helping us to move onward and upward in a more positive direction. The symbolism of the dragon is just so rich with meaning, and I know I'm just touching on this. Consider also the south node, the tail of the dragon. Now, when we look at animals, what is the function of the tail? The tail exists for a few different reasons, but one of the big reasons a tail exists is to protect the anus. The anus is considered uh, especially vulnerable for animals. And what is the function <laughs> of that part of the body? Well, it has to do with expulsion. It has to do with the crap in our life that we're getting rid of. It is lower vibration if ever there was. It has to do with what it is that we just can't hold on to anymore. We've got to release it. It is toxic and sometimes it is gross. It is not anything that we need to hold within anymore. And so it is with this eclipse. So close to the south node. A part of the key characteristic of this time just might be having a recognition of as much as we want new beginnings, there's some crap that we may have to at least acknowledge. There's a sense of acknowledgement of what it is that has ultimately held us down or held us back. And a lot of that might be rooted in how we've understood our connections and our relationships with others. Now, this can play out again in one-on-one -on -one alliances, the partners in our lives. We're going to see a lot of people working through powerful relationship karma. But this can also play out on a larger stage. The energy of Libra is also about diplomacy. And diplomacy is about getting along between nations and the relationships they have with each other and how they're going to navigate that. This is where we acknowledge that new beginnings have to happen, but at the same time with those new beginnings, wow, there might be some really complex emotion and some really old patterns that are being held on to that maybe aren't helping anybody anymore. And at the very least, we get to acknowledge it now. But there's something else of interest here that I find so incredibly fascinating. Black Moon Lilith. Look at how close Black Moon Lilith is to this eclipse. It is hand in hand. It is right there. It is conjunct. And of course, I'm looking at the eclipse taking place with perfection in Toronto. If you have taken classes with me at Synchronicity University, you know that there are moments that I will just start talking about Lilith and the myth of Lilith. So I'm going to just touch on it a little bit now. Um, Lilith is such a powerful, iconic symbol that goes back thousands of years. A symbol that I have sought to give voice to. That includes actually going to the Red Sea, which is a big part of her story as well. So let me give you the very, very quick synopsis, the cliff notes that I think is going to help us to understand the symbolism in relation to this eclipse, because it is a big one. It is powerful to contemplate. And so Lilith is often known as the first wife of Adam. And it is God, and I'm going to like use that language here. We can say the creator, we could say the divine, whatever language it is that helps you to conceptualize what this energy could mean, especially symbolically. But okay, here we are, and it is the divine creator that takes clay and creates two human beings and breathes life into them at the same time. And this is where we get the birth of Lilith and Adam. And it is God that says, okay, I've created the two of you for each other. I'm out of here. Get to know each other. Get acquainted. You're for each other. Well, God leaves the room. Adam tells Lilith to lie down and he's going to get on top of her. And Lilith says, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not laying down for you. Not now, not ever. And Adam says, well, you were created for me. You have to do it. And she's like, oh, no, I don't. And Lilith takes off screaming and heads to the middle of the Red Sea. So Adam goes to God and says, what's going on with this girl? You said she was for me. She's not listening. She's not doing what it is that she was created to do. And so God sends three of his angels to go get Lilith and bring her back. And when the angels go out into the middle of the Red Sea, she says to them, no, I'm not going back to him. And then God goes out into the middle of the Red Sea and says, 
I made the dude for you. I made the two of you for each other. And she says, I don't like him and I don't want to be with him. And she negotiates with God for her freedom. And from there we see for the next several hundred years, right? This is mythology of the birthplace of patriarchy. It is Lilith that is essentially a celibate goddess. She's hanging out with the animals or she's screaming her head off in the middle of the Red Sea, but she loves it. She feels free there. Consider this. It is several hundred years later that we find Lilith begin to evolve. And over the course of centuries, she goes from celibate goddess, really in her own energy, her own power, connected to who she is, happy, going her own way. And then she becomes, slowly again, a, a succubus type figure, right? She becomes this hypersexualized figure. She becomes the queen of Satan, queen of hell. Uh, and we see this morphing happen and some very complex mystical stories emerge um, in the centuries ahead. I'll link to some resources below that I found really interesting to contemplate this symbolism with. I remember wanting to connect with her energy. I want to give you your props. I want to celebrate you. Help me to understand you. And let me just say, I had brutal experiences. I had experiences that connected me to her anger. Let's just say that the uh, treatment of women that I saw and I experienced personally, it made me really, really angry. It made me feel really powerless and a, a whole range of emotion. It was like this generational trauma coming to the surface for me. And after I left, I cried every day for about three months. And I really felt like I did not want to, uh, you know, flirt or anything like that. I was not even thinking along those lines. I needed to be in my own space to remember something about myself and to connect with her energy that much more gave me that opportunity to do that. On my way home recently, I had a chance to move through Mexico. I lived in Mexico for about 10 years. Those of you who've watched me for a while are aware of this and my love for that country, my deep connection to that country. And first I went to Cancun where I was for seven years. And then I went to Mexico City where I was for uh, about two to three years. And when I was in Cancun, I ended up reconnecting with a friend of mine and her name is Camilla. And Camilla is somebody that I met about 10 years earlier at an astrology conference in Mexico City. Camilla and I were kind of catching up. And I said, you know, hey, what are you up to? What are you doing now? And she told me that during the pandemic, she started giving more energy to her TikTok account. And she has since grown her account to almost 200,000 followers. And I couldn't be more proud of her. She is an absolutely brilliant astrologer. And when in conversation with her, we started talking about Lilith and her first response to understanding Lilith was Lilith is anger. And I had to admit that my own experience has shown me that that is a part of Lilith as well. That is part of her truth as well. And so consider that this symbol that has been misunderstood that has been revered, that has become so iconic and complex, is hand in hand with this eclipse, which is hand in hand with the South Node as well. This highly independent energy in a part of the sky that has to do with partnership and marriage specifically. We've also got Mercury there. And Mercury has to do with negotiation, communication, and expression. So it's involving what we're talking about at this time. And when I put these energies together, along with the square to Mars, which represents anger in its own way, an anger that we can feel, an impulsivity, well, I just see an awakening around the dynamics of relationships and where they work for us and where they don't and how people feel about it. And this could be reminiscent of a, a type of Me Too moment that we might see on a collective level that could end up really making an impact. And there is going to be this stirring of anger that's likely possible in terms of our understanding of, 
uh, of perhaps some relationship dynamics that become uh, symbolic of or an encapsulation of some of the ways in which partnerships can involve power struggle, power games, or just um, people not being nice with each other, people behaving in ways that are on the one hand a desire to be free from those alliances and that desire is restricted and how it is that it facilitates even more anger, we're going to see the crap. That's what we're likely to see. The crap that has to do with what it is ultimately that facilitates and becomes part of a festering of anger when it is that certain alliances and certain relationships become toxic or become unhealthy. But there's also a lot of reason for hope. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes we need to acknowledge the crap. We need to face the South Node with so much in us so that we can find our way towards the North Node, that more elevated sense of self. And the way I understand the North Node has to do with our movement towards greater love and greater wisdom. It is about owning our own divine energy, again, collectively, but in our individual journeys as well. And with the North Node in Aries, until January of 2025, right around the corner, there is an emphasis placed on the individual, on going your own way, on trusting yourself, of being connected to your own fire, the things that give you life, the breath of life itself being so connected to it that you can't help but trust it to start new pathways. Venus is the ruling planet of the eclipse. The eclipse is in the sign of Libra. The ruling planet of Libra is Venus. So whatever Venus is doing at this time becomes important in helping us to understand eclipse energy. And Venus is involved in a grand trine with Mars and with Saturn, a larger, supremely harmonious configuration taking place in the element of water, involving all three water signs. It is at the very beginning of the week that Mars perfects its connection with Saturn, and at the end of the week, Venus connects with Saturn with precision, and yet it is this larger configuration that remains active throughout the week as these planets remain within orb of a grand trine, we will be feeling that energy. And to me, this suggests that we know the right thing to do and we're willing to feel our way through this moment as part of creating different structures, or at least recognizing what structures are needed, what changes are needed, as we admit some truths that might be hard and at first might feel, to be very honest with you, triggering for a lot of people out there, we also have an understanding of how to engage this moment with a sense of maturity and responsibility. Saturn always invites us to consider, to contemplate what actions we can take, that ultimately will fuel self-respect. That is the larger gift of Saturn. When you walk your talk, but that's not all, right? <laughs> like this eclipse moment is so powerful because what else is happening under the light of the eclipse? Well, it involves the midpoint of Uranus and Mars. Uh, and Jupiter moving over that midpoint. So midpoints are considered a more advanced technique, and I actually uh, awakened my enthusiasm for them thanks to a brilliant course that was taught by the very brilliant Alejo Lopez that you've seen on my channel before as well. He's taught at Synchronicity University a few times as well. He is just such a gifted astrologer. I had a chance to spend some time with him last year when I was in Argentina for about a month. He taught a course that included an exploration of midpoints, and he gave this live demonstration at Synchronicity Web TV. You can find that here on my channel. And he was showing how to calculate midpoints and how powerful they actually are and how they can be used in prediction personally in our own lives, but also on a collective level as well. They can be incredibly insightful. And midpoints are just like they sound, right? You take one body, you take another body in the sky, and you figure out the exact middle degree uh, for the two of them. And that point becomes sort of one of these hot points in the zodiac at a given moment. 
Jupiter moving over this hot point, well, whatever Jupiter touches magnifies, it grows, it becomes that much bigger. And so what do we have here? Mars and Cancer, right? That is an energy of patriotism, of nations, of our own home, of a desire to feel safe that we might have. And Uranus, of course, in the sign of Taurus, well, Uranus brings with it surprise events out of the blue. But in Taurus, it speaks to what's happening with the economy, what's happening with resources. And Taurus also is a sign also ruled by Venus, right? Powerful activations happening here all around, right at eclipse season. Jupiter making this energy that much bigger, well, there are going to be surprises at this time. On the world stage, but in our own lives as well, it may feel like whatever you think you're about to understand, whatever you think is like percolating below the surface, there might be some of that. I mean, after all, on Monday, we do get the sun conjunct Mercury, and Mercury is conjunct the eclipse. So this is sort of the little bit of a precursor, the foreshadowing, if you will, to that eclipse energy. So we might think we know what's percolating, but there's still likely to be surprises, things that we really didn't expect that may at first hand feel and look really big to us, feel and look really large to us. But ultimately, we are granted a moment of respite. And it is ultimately that grand trine of Mars to Saturn and Venus to Saturn and to Mars, this grand trine energy that is in many ways going to be a saving grace to what otherwise are energies that could feel downright erratic. And they can feel in a moment like a whole lot is rising but then we also get the opportunity here to decide on the responsible thing, the mature thing, and what it is that we're actually going for in a larger sense. And regardless of what stimuli might come up, what is it that we're actually willing to do to manifest something more stable, something more secure, and something more loving as well? This is Venus after all. Venus in Scorpio, she works extra hard here. The ancients believed that Venus uh, didn't really like being in the sign of Scorpio as much. This is exactly opposite her home sign of Taurus. And so think about how you are uh, when you're far away from home. Now me, I have a Sag moon. So of course, I'm so happy and so elated. But most people don't necessarily feel that way. I remember coming home about a year ago and talking to a friend and he was like, hey, how does it feel to be back in your own bed? And I was like, you know, I never, ever even had that thought. Like this would be something to look forward to. That would be something to look forward to. I mean, I just love hotels so much, but okay, that's me. Having said that, yes, Venus working extra hard. She's far from home. Mars as well works extra hard to find its power because Mars most loves to be in the sign of Capricorn, opposite the sign of Cancer. And so this is part of the rationale that the ancients um, presented to us as part of understanding how different planets operate in different signs. And so here we have Venus and Mars working super hard, working extra hard, and they're connected to Saturn now. And so that effort that they're making ultimately is likely in service of or is shaped by an understanding what the right thing is to do in this moment, the mature thing, the responsible thing, and where it is perhaps that if we want to make those gains towards greater stability collectively and individually, it starts with being honest with ourselves right now. And as I look at this energy, a lot of us, like I said, relationships might feel especially dramatic now. We're getting real moments of truth about the relationships we find ourselves in or have found ourselves in. But the fact that we've got that grand trine playing out that I've been emphasizing here, it does suggest we're also willing to do the work that healing sometimes requires. Those of you who watched me for a while know that I don't normally like talking about myself that much. I really love that my work isn't about me, 
But over the last few years, I have been learning to get more comfortable uh, with just sharing uh, my own lessons as I navigate them. And it was about four years ago that I ended a seven-year relationship. And after about four months of being single, I met somebody. And at first, it was like a dream come true, right? It was just so loving and it seemed so perfect. And uh, right around five, six months is when this person started getting jealous and then started getting mean and then started getting um, emotionally abusive and then started getting physically abusive. And I didn't even realize what was happening. And I remember the moment, it was about mm, some, I don't know, nine months, almost nine months in, eight months in, when I had this moment where I realized, oh my God, this dude is toxic. And this is a really messed up situation and I have to get myself out of here. And once I had that realization, you know, I was so fortunate that I was able to then like leave three days later and, and that's it. Never saw a dude again. It's incredible to me that I didn't recognize any of these, you know, warning signs, uh, partly because I just have a lot of empathy and I, you know, sort of said, oh, he's just insecure. He needs some confidence. He needs some reassurance and things like that. But yeah, you know, toxic people, they're going to be toxic. <laughs> they're going to find a way to reveal themselves. Now, the reason I share this with you is for a few reasons. One is I really believe if I could find myself in a situation like that, which I have never had in my entire life. And I was raised with very strong women who constantly were telling me, make sure a guy respects you, make sure you're never in that situation. For me to find myself in that situation really means that anybody could find themselves in that situation. But the other reason I share it is because after the fact, and what I really wasn't sharing as I continued to make videos and, and continued to be in front of you was how much my self-respect took a hit, how incredibly painful it was to try and rebuild myself in the months ahead. And it literally took months for me to get to a place where I could be in any way able to genuinely connect with other people or even have that sense of innocence and vulnerability required to even engage people on a level of possibility. Because before it even gets physical, remember, there's that emotional abuse. And what is that? That's often how someone's speaking to you. And being mean, being jealous, being insulting, that messaging from someone that you actually have come to care about over the last few months, as was the case with me, it stays with you well after the relationship is over. And so, yes, after I left, uh, about two weeks later, I knew for sure that it was done. And what I started doing is I started telling everybody in my life about what had happened. Everybody, like people who I never talked to about dating stuff ever, 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 I started telling them. And the reason I did that is because I never wanted to be in a place where I would lie to myself, that I would, you know, in any way offer that window for this person to come back in. That was really important to me. And I knew that the people who loved me, the people around me, they would hold me accountable. And they, in their love and in the way that they look at me and show up for me, they would want better for me. And they would be a reminder that that's not the way for me to go. The hit that your self-respect takes, those messages and how they stay in you, and for me, it was just a few months of that. And for other people, they stay in that for a very long time. And we can say on the other side of it, yeah, that's some PTSD that you're dealing with. Now, I share all this because there are going to be some of us that are going to be aware of the hit our self-respect has taken. We're going to become aware under the light of this eclipse, whether it's a current circumstance or a past circumstance how it is that there have been situations with downright unfairness. And it's now 
that we're letting ourselves feel all of it. But whatever it is that comes forward, whatever it is that we're feeling, it ultimately will fuel the resolve that gets us to the other side. And that resolve is keeping promises we make to ourselves. That resolve is strengthening ourselves by whatever means we need to. For me, like I said, it was about telling lots of people in my life what had happened, the truth of what was happening, that I had hidden and presented this wonderful ideal relationship, but it was really not. It was really a mess. But what that sense of accountability is for you, you'll find it and we'll see people find it. But there's also a sense here of being real with yourself. And when you're real with yourself, it's like you see it and you can't unsee it. Being real with yourself means that once you see the truth, you can no longer lie to yourself. And I think that's part of the gift of this moment. It is a sense of cleansing. It is the expulsion, right? It's getting rid of the crap past or present. And it starts with acknowledging what's crap. And connecting to that Saturn means that we realize we deserve better. We deserve our own respect. We deserve respect in general. And that whatever that is for us, whatever a more stable future could be for us, we become that much more willing to do the work to get there. What I love about this week for us, there's so much here. It's a powerful and meaningful astrological moment. Well, look, it's a huge astrological week without a doubt. And of course, the glitz, the glamour, the glory has got to go to the eclipse energy. This is set to be so important. Now, whether that importance shows up in our own lives, in our own relationships, which is very possible now, in our collective awareness of the dynamics that play out between two people, where they're toxic, where they're not, and how we collectively can support positive change, we are going to start to become aware of those one-on-one -on -one alliances in our lives. And awareness really is key. That is the first step towards facilitating positive change. Sometimes that change is initiated by first acknowledging what's no longer working for us, by acknowledging the crap. It is crap for a reason, because it's got to go. And with that sense of what exits, there's also this really exciting energy there. Because eclipses are exciting. A solar eclipse is a brand new beginning on offer for us. And whatever that new beginning is for you individually, it will, as part of a larger plan, move you towards one-on-one -on -one alliances that help you to maintain a sense of yourself and ultimately supports healthy respect all around. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys and to prove it to you, here are some of my most recent favorite comments. Thank you to everybody who likes, who comments, subscribes, shares, thumbs up. It helps the algorithm. It helps people find this video. Uh, it helps the channel so much. I'm so grateful for it. Thank you. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShawSuperstars.com where you get expanded exclusive video scopes for as low as just $3 a month with Choose Your Membership Rate. Higher tiers get you things like all access passes to Synchronicity University events, consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the superstar space at NadiaShawSuperstars.com or the future is magical.com. Links are in the description below. And I do want to take a moment here to thank my superstars so very much. Thank you for your love and your support and your trust for so long now that Superstar has been up, whether it is that you're a brand new subscriber, we recently had a boost in that. So thank you to the new uh, members out there, the new superstars out there, uh, or whether it is that you've been a part of Superstar for a long time. Each and every one of you, I'm grateful. And if you haven't joined Superstar, well, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching this video. All of it, it means so much to me. So thank you for that. Synchronicity University has some absolutely incredible programs coming up. 
in November, and you've got a very limited time left to choose your tuition rate. As low as just $5 a class, we are launching courses here, and boys, there are a lot of enthusiasm and excitement starting to build. It was this week that we launched a brand new speaker series, and this is bringing mystic vibes into the mix. And it's going to have an overall scorpion theme, Halloween theme. We started experimenting with themes and it seems to be going really well. But I did want to do something that helped us to connect with that more magical and occult and energy of mediumship over the course of this time. And that's what each one of these speakers is going to help you to do in their own unique way. These are all teachers that you've seen before, how perfect for them to be coming back to Synchronicity University at a time when well, the wisdom of the past, the wisdom of the ancestors tends to stir very strongly. And it is going to be this program that starts in November, right after Halloween. This is going to be super exciting. So you can learn a lot more about these classes and about the speaker series by heading to synchronicityuniversity.com. Links are in the description below. Synchronicity University is proud to present the mystic within intuition, psychic abilities, and more with the one and only Tiffany Harlick. Tiffany is a experienced and gifted teacher. She is someone who's bringing years of experience towards helping you to cultivate all these wonderful things, psychic ability, mystical abilities, and so much more. And she grounds it in an astrological understanding as well, helping you to see your psychic strengths in your chart and so much more. Tiffany has come so highly recommended. She brings such big, wonderful, positive energy. I know that this is going to be a class that many people find rewarding. You've got a limited time left to choose your tuition rate. At synchronicityuniversity.com, learn more about Tiffany's class and sign up now. Links are in the description below. Synchronicity University is proud to present Spiritual Gangster Certified. It is the one and only Janae Jones. You've seen her on my channel as well before, and she is bringing advanced techniques. Now, Janae has a hugely popular Facebook page that is called Spiritual Gangster Certified. She shares amazing insights there. But yeah, she's taught at Synchronicity University before. She has an amazing YouTube channel that I absolutely love, the way that she breaks down the charts of different celebrities and what's happening in their life now. And I sort of just connected with her online a few years ago, and I've loved getting to know her better and better, and I've loved learning from her and presenting her here at Synchronicity University. So Janae is going to present some more advanced techniques. This really is going to take your astrological practice to the next level. We're looking at decans and duads and so much more with the class that she is going to present. You've got a limited time to choose your tuition rate. It's always just $5 a class to step up your astrological skills in this way with brilliant advanced techniques presented by a brilliant teacher, Janae Jones at synchronicityuniversity.com. Links are in the description below. And thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your trust. I'm so grateful for it. The short horoscopes at the end of these weekly explorations have been getting wonderful feedback. Thank you so much for watching them, for sticking around for that, uh, and for the trust that you show in my interpretation of the sky. And of course, with a huge week like this, of course, I have to give you a look ahead with short horoscopes looking specifically at the eclipse energy that we are going to welcome this week. Now, do keep in mind, I'll be talking a lot more about that eclipse and so much more in the October horoscope that will be published here on my YouTube channel as well. And of course, you can get even more insights by heading to NadiaShawSuperstars.com or TheFutureIsMagical.com. Thank you again for this moment with you. I absolutely love our connection and I am always grateful for your trust. It'll be a great week. Enjoy. October 2nd brings with it a powerful solar eclipse in the sign of Libra, bringing a remarkable focus on our one-on-one -on -one relationships with others into view. And we are likely to see whom it is that we're partnered with, whom it is we're aligned with, and how it is that they see us very differently under the light of this solar eclipse. 
The eclipse is close in the sky to the south node with a new beginning that a new moon solar eclipse brings. There's also going to be some sense of closure, of recognizing what sucks, what's crap, and that you don't want to deal with anymore. And either you're going to do the work to find resolution, to move towards healthier relationships, or this can be just the wake up call you need to go another way. And that is part of the potential of this time. Black Moon Lilith is hand in hand with this eclipse, an icon of female awakening to their own power and independence and a sense of self-trust that is undeniable no matter what anybody else thinks. Mercury nearby means that whatever's showing up, we're talking about it with each other, but also collectively as well. There is going to be some insight, some reminder that toxic relationships do exist, but with awareness comes real hope that we can change things for the better now and moving forward from here for more people than before. This energy is dramatic, but it's also tremendously promising for the new pathways, new understandings, and new chapters ahead. Where those new chapters are set to take place for you? Well, a lot depends on your sun, moon, and rising sign. You want to take all three into consideration and then synthesize the information. And of course, you can check out my YouTube channel for the monthly horoscopes, and you can check out NadiaShawSuperstars.com for weekly horoscopes that'll help you to make the most of this time that much more. Aries partnerships, especially love is going to be highlighted here in big ways. Relationships that are healthy are going to feel that much more empowered and that much more dedicated as you find yourself feeling like a better version of yourself. But relationships that have had issues or are toxic in any way, that toxicity will need to be addressed past or present now, you're ready to move forward towards healthier relationships. And you also are honest with yourself about whether or not your current circumstances merit the work that change sometimes require, or are you better going another way? Taurus, the energy of dramatic change and messy one-on-one -on -one connections and interactions is likely going to play out. And I'm sorry to say your workplace, clients, customers, coworkers, where there's been manipulation, where there's been a sense of people not necessarily being fair, all of that is going to come to the surface in a moment that might feel downright impulsive. And this could suggest somebody leaving and somebody coming in, one of these specific people specifically. This could also be you claiming your power to move your health in a positive direction. Gemini, romance, flirtation, and what the heart wants. Well, that can be downright complicated. This can play out with people you're dating or new people that you might meet now, where you get to see some insight into yourself and what it is that you believe about relationships. All of that could stir given a moment that you might have with another. A moment of flirtation can have powerful, sweeping effects as it serves as a catalyst in your life. Now, a childlike wonder could awaken for you along with a dedication to your creative voice. Cancer, if anybody is going to feel the past awaken in a surprise moment, it certainly is going to be you. Mars in your sign is squared this eclipse, which means you just might be the source of some of that impulsive energy we have here. Be mindful of your connections with family members in particular, whether family of origin or in your living space. That's where you might have an unexpected reaction that could serve as a powerful moment of self-awareness around what it is that you feel must change right now about those dynamics or your current living situation and new opportunities to move that you really didn't expect could show up for you. Leo, siblings, cousins, and neighbors, they might have some downright surprising announcements. And whether or not it affects you, it may lead to you feeling a certain way and maybe lead to you feeling angry as well. I'm so sorry to say, but it does happen. And you get to decide how much you're going to express of that or not. At the same time, though, this is communication of all kinds. And you do want to be careful because as you're communicating, you could provoke a very strong reaction in another whether you intended to or you were unconscious of it, someone is likely to interpret what you're saying in a way that feels 
uh, as if it lends itself to, at the very least, an uncomfortable moment. The great thing about these feelings coming out into the open, finally being verbalized, means that you're on the path towards healing them. Virgo, money you earn, money you spend, self-love and self-esteem. For most Virgos, this is going to be money matters coming into focus in some way, whether it is insight into a new opportunity or brand new ways of earning money that you want to embrace, or just realizing the way you've been going about it just isn't working for you anymore. Expenses could show up at this time as well, but when we have such strong financial energy, it means that the money you need is there. You're engaging powerful spiritual lessons as part of aligning with greater abundance. Libra, identity, what matters to you most and first and priorities. Wow, you are about to see yourself really differently and it's probably going to be rooted in an understanding of who you no longer want to be, but hand in hand with that comes a brand new beginning and a new chapter for your life. This can lend itself to massive changes or personal realizations that may not necessarily be evident to others and yet have this effect of putting you on a brand new pathway rooted in a different understanding of what your priorities are going forward from here. Scorpio, what you didn't know, all of a sudden you are about to know and it is going to feel like a downright surprise, seemingly out of nowhere. Now, this could be some insight or truth about you and yourself with so much happening on levels of soul, psyche, and spirit. There is such restless energy here. Now, this could also be an external circumstance, but what I will say is this is a part of the sky that has to do with fortunate karmic closures. Embrace them however it is that they find you, even if the moment feels unexpected. Ultimately, hand in hand with this eclipse, you're moving towards better. Sagittarius, friendships and group alliances, all of that can shift and be turned over in an instant. Whether it is the person you least expected being there for you in powerful ways, new friendships showing up for you as well that awaken you to your power. But it's also possible here that your involvement in a professional group endeavor or with a particular friend ends at this time with a lot of energy and maybe even anger and frustration as well. You're motivated to move towards more authentic alliances and you will find them. Capricorn, career, social standing, life purpose, areas of life that are very important to the Capricorns out there. In an instant, you find yourself with brand new opportunities and brand new pathways as well. This could bring with it a dramatic change in either the relationship with or who it is that is your boss or person of position of authority. Their behavior may provoke you in a way that has you going a whole other way. At the same time, awareness of life purpose and honesty about whether or not you're living it could alter your path. Aquarius, long distance travel, immigration, citizenship, higher learning, and legal matters. This is where new chapters could find you, but also closures could find you as well as part of feeling free of a situation that might have felt downright messy that it made you angry. Now, if that isn't the situation in your life at all, well, a chance to travel could have lasting impacts in your life. This could be a moment where you find your political voice or someone has a response to uh, what it is that you express that you believe philosophically or spiritually, and you get to decide what weight you're going to bring it. At the very least, it helps you to connect with a deep understanding that you have a right to see the world as you choose. Pisces, profound change, truth, transformation, regeneration, and financial resources are going to show up here. For many Pisceans, this is going to mean needing to pay attention to a matter having to do with a grant, loan, or benefits that you qualify for. And finding resolution just as quickly could happen at this time as well. You may feel like you need resources. Now, remember, whatever's happening financially, the money you need is there. There might be some scrambling and needing to respond very quickly, and it might just represent a mix-up. But many Pisceans won't experience this financially. It's going to have a lot more to do with insights into what it is that you feel you're ready to change and what it is that must change and you're willing to do the work that change sometimes requires. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy. 